Last weekend I was able to play the Rivals of Ether 2 beta and this game is absolutely amazing. And despite it being in beta, it already feels very polished. Of course, like in any beta, there are several things which need to be patched, buffed and nerfed because some stuff is or might become insanely broken as soon as the game fully releases. And honestly, this is normal in any fighting game. What? what? He has chain grabs? But overall, I had a ton of fun with this game. Today I just wanna talk about what I enjoyed the most about Rivals 2, what I did not enjoy, prepare for some game assault because that's all just personal, and why everybody should at least try out this game. Bro, that was sick. Which you can by the way play without paying any money beforehand. That's right, the Rivals of Ether developers announced that they are launching a free online demo starting from October 14th until the 21st of October, where everybody can join and get some matches in. So if you are unsure about buying the game or not, this is definitely your time to try it at least out. And no, I'm not sponsored by the Rivals of Ether 2 developers or the publisher of brand games. I just really loved that game and wanted to succeed as a platform fighter and competitive game. First of all, what are the differences to its predecessor? The most important ones are definitely the ability to shield, which was not a feature in Rivals of Ether 1. Back in this game you only had a parry button, which shoots back projectiles, makes your character invincible for a short period of time, and if your opponent attacked you close enough, they were also stunned, leaving them open for a major punish. The parry mechanic is still in Rivals 2, but you can only use it by pressing a different button. That's right, the shield button and the parry button are two different buttons in Rivals 2. So you have to be careful if you want to parry incoming attacks for a big punish, or rather shield and wait out your opponent's barrage of attacks. But not for too long though, otherwise you get shield broken. Including a shield in a platform fighter means you also have to include another mechanic to complete the rock paper scissor of attacking, shielding and you guessed it, grabbing. As a grab you can throw your opponent in four different directions or you can pummel them beforehand with two different kinds of pummels. Attack and special pummel. And both are special in their own way. These pummels are usually used in a way so the characters apply the signature trademark to the enemy. Setter Burn can inflict burn with a pummel, Maple applies cotton to the enemy, which I still don't know what it does exactly. But hey, I only had 3 days, I'm gonna figure it out as soon as the game releases and many more things. The pummel comes with a risk though. If somebody uses for example the special pummel on you, you can also press the special button to break free of the grab. There is no mashing or anything, you have to guess correctly. Honestly, I think Special Pummel is oftentimes the best bet anyway, because you don't want to get burned by Setterburn, for example, and die at 100 to an Afro. There ain't no way that kills! What?! Speaking of special and attack differences in pummeling, the same applies to the get up attack on the ground and get up attack on the ledge. You can either special get up or attack get up, and depending on which you use, there are different outcomes. Honestly, the special and attack mechanic is a pretty sick addition. But I believe that this is one thing that needs a little bit of tweaking here and there. Some specials are just absurd, but hey, it could also just be me being a rival snoop. Also, I'm a little bit nitpicky here to be honest, because I died to Setterburn's special pummel afro over and over again, and to be fair, it was also not in my muscle memory that I can just press special to escape that confirm. So yeah, might be as well. Also, now that I talked about it so much, you can also grab the ledges in Rivals 2 and edgehog your opponent to take the stocks while they are trying to recover back on stage. Oh, the ledge hog, yeah right, I always forget that. Now, let's get into my experience playing the game. As many Smash peeps know, I main Link in almost every Smash game. The exception being Melee, where I played the funny bird. And one of my favorite things to do with Link is sniping people with arrows. Furthermore, one of my top 3 most liked animals are foxes. They are in second place right behind snakes. Yes, I love snakes, geckos, crocodiles and all the other reptiles. I think they are super cute. You got a problem with that? Then kiss my snake butt. Fleet and Rivals of Ether 2 checks both of these criteria. Sniping people with bow and arrow? Check. Is a cute fox? Check. Oh my god, a <laughs> triple snipe! This made it very easy for me to choose a main character. But still, the most important question remains. They also like the general movement and playstyle of Fleet and Rivals 2. And the answer is absolutely yes. As with any new fighting game, I went into practice mode to check out the moves and movement of Fleet and most importantly, of the game itself as well. I spent like one or one and a half hours in practice mode just moving around on the first day and checking out what every move does for Fleet. Here's a quick rundown of the most important and character defining moves, the specials. 
Fleet's up special is a recovery where she jumps up one time and then either goes low, mid or up. The low up special can be used as a mix up or you can cancel it on platforms or near the edge as a movement option which you might also use to enter her float state. Yes, Fleet can float in this game which is super awesome. Her side special shoots an arrow in an up diagonal, middle or downwards diagonal direction. If Fleet is not interrupted during that, she summons a tornado which follows the trail the arrow left behind. This tornado keeps the opponent in and you can prepare for an attack to combo even further. Her down special launches her backwards and shoots an arrow in a diagonal trajectory. I think it also has invincibility frames, but I'm not sure. I used this move mainly to gain some extra distance while recovering through B reversing it and yes, B reverses are in this game too. And then there is her neutral special, which enhances Fleet's arrows. If you hit an opponent with specific arrow moves that being the third hit of jab, down air, back throw, F smash, up smash and maybe down smash, I'm not sure I didn't use it too often unfortunately, then your opponent gets marked and receives an extra hit after about 2 seconds or so. It is kinda similar to Sephiroth Shadow Flare in Smash Ultimate in the sense that it's a ticking time bomb which deals damage and knockback like a tiny time bomb. However, the opponent can hit fleet and then the marker switches positions and is on fleet instead. So you gotta be careful with this move, when to use it and how to use it against your opponent. I could go on and on with her moves, but you will see most of her moves during the rest of the video anyway. I just wanted to explain the specials really quickly for future references, particularly her neutral special. Holy shit! <laughs> After the initial practice was done, I got into some online matches. They are divided by singles, doubles and free for all. Because I wanted to practice and just play around, I rather played some singles. I think doubles or free for all would have been too much chaos for me, but I'll definitely try them out after a while when the game is fully released. As soon as you enter the singles lobby, you will see the typical stuff like in Rivals of Ether 1. It starts with a best of 3 and you can pick the character of your choice. And then you get into a match with your opponent on a random stage. And the first set started as I thought it would be. I self-destructed here and there, my movement was not crisp at all and I apparently played against somebody who already played Rivals of Ether 1 a ton. And just like expected, I got my ass absolutely whooped. After the first game was done, it was time to ban and pick stages. In this part of the game I was absolutely clueless which stage to pick, but that didn't matter too much. It's all about learning the game at this point. The next match started and unsurprisingly enough the crack player tossed rocks at me back and forth and I also lost the second game and they won the set. But you all know me, I won't give up this easily. I'm here to learn this game and improve. So I challenged him to another best of three and got my ass whooped 2-0 a second time. So yeah, that was basically my first set. Well, which is not entirely true, my first game was against a Setterburn I beat game 1 and won and done afterwards. Because I forgot to set my controls and didn't know where to set them. Sorry Setterburn player, I really didn't want to leave, I was just confused. These were my first, let's say, 20 minutes of playing against other players and what I have to say is that in every match it really felt like the better player won. And there was always a lot of testing going on. How can I combo with this move? How can I take a stock? And what is the best way to move around? What should I do in this advantage or advantage? What are my best neutral tools? What about the game's techniques like wave dashing and moonwalking? Why does Crack have a Brazil alt with a football? There were a lot of questions and only so little time to answer them all. But I tried my best to get as many games in as possible while not neglecting my editing work of course. Also during these 3 days I mainly played Fleet. I know a few people remember that I mained Claren in Rivals of Ether 1. And you probably thought that I will try her out and you are kinda correct? I tried Claren out for a few matches but switched back to Fleet oftentimes again. I haven't played Rivals of Ether 1 for over half a year now I think. But the funny part is that my muscle memory is still intact. <laughs> Specifically when playing Claren. Not with Fleet, just with Claren. You have to know that my strong attacks, basically Rivals smash attacks, were on set. My grab button back in Rivals 1. There was no grab and I needed a button to input strong attacks. So I used this one. Now that Rivals of Ether 2 introduced grabs, my set button is set to grab. And I use strong attacks normally by flicking the stick really hard and pressing A. Which worked fine when playing Fleet. But as soon as I got a confirm with Claren, I knew from Rivals 1, I always tried to press set for a strong attack and grab instead. I would have never thought that muscle memory can be such a pain in the ass. Even though I didn't play for a while now. Let's talk about the online connection. It feels buttery smooth and I had so much fun playing in it. Rivals of Ether 2 comes with rollback netcode and it is really good, at least from my experience. There were maybe one or two matches where my opponent teleported here and there a bit, 
but I'd say it was their fault and not rivals. Also, I couldn't really find the matches anymore while editing this footage. So yeah, the online lag was not too noticeable, let's say that. A game can have the best netcode in existence, but it doesn't help much if the players themselves have trash internet. And apparently, there weren't many people out there that filled that specific criteria. I cannot tell you how much pain I felt when I switched from playing Rivals of Ether 2 on Sunday to Smash Ultimates online on Tuesday. The viewers who watched my video on the secondary channel Cylinder Vault know what was up. The first game was already so laggy, it was unbelievable. That being said, I had no complaints whatsoever in Rivals of Ether and playing online felt like playing in the training mode of Rivals or offline, which is super important for such a fast paced game. And how were the matches itself? Well, because it is an open beta, I think it was basically open for everybody, which means a top player could play against an absolute beginner and wreck their shit, and hey, this basically happened to me as well. You cannot imagine how often I got demolished, but it didn't matter at all for me. I had so much fun, because it felt like everything could have been in my control just by playing better. I mean, during these three days, I learned a lot. I practiced the game and the character, I've seen how other players play and tried to copy that a tiny bit for my neutral game, especially the movement, the shield usage and more. My advantage state got better, my disadvantage sucked still ass I think. This is so super hard for me in this game, but we're getting there as soon as it fully releases. This beta weekend was the best experience for me because it showed me something I really wanted to know. Will I really enjoy this game? And the answer is absolutely yes. Every single time when the stream was about to end, because I had so much editing work to do, I played overtime. I did not want to stop playing and practice more. My fingers hurt from moving around so fast. My brain was fried from all the information it sucked in during these three days. But I still wanted to play more. I can only recommend giving Rivals of Ether 2 a shot. If you like platform fighters, this might be the game for you. Oh! Oh, let's go! <laughs> As said in the beginning of the video, the Rivals developers and their publisher off-brand are releasing a free demo before the game's launch from the 14th of October until the 21st of October. So if you're hesitating about buying this game or not, this is your time to give it a shot. It is a great game. I had a ton of fun during these three days and I already want to play more and I also want to make more content of this game. Oh! Oh, let's go! Thank you all for watching today's video. I cannot wait for more Rivals of Ether gameplay. This is such an awesome game. And if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, comment and subscribe. Also don't forget to check out our Discord server or the Twitch streams. The links are in the description. Until next time, bye bye.